Yay! Hi! This is my first time premiering something. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the live stream. Hi. Yay, thanks everyone for joining. Hopefully you can hear me all good. Uh, submissions are closed for the time being. They were open for the last two days. As you can see, we have so many photos <laughs> to get through. Um, but as soon as this live stream finishes, um, tomorrow or the day after, I'll post on my Instagram story and on Twitter. Um, how you can submit your photos because I want to do these live stream editing videos live streams <laughs> a little bit more often I thought we could do another one maybe on like Friday or early next week or something so anyone who missed out submitting you can submit for the next live stream hey everyone yay so many so many people Yeah, so we're gonna jump into editing. If you guys see your photos up here in Lightroom, I downloaded pretty much every single submission that you guys sent me, aside from some that may have not worked or like errored out or something. So if you see your photo, let me know in the chat so I can prioritize editing that since you guys are here and I'd prefer to edit someone's photo who's like watching. And yes, of course, I'll be giving some editing tips today. <laughs> The way you greet at the start of your video is super charming. <laughs> it's so funny because when I first started my YouTube channel, maybe like two years ago, I just said that, like not really thinking anything of it. And it's turned into a thing like you guys really like it. So that's awesome. There is mine with the cat. OK, where's the cat picture? Am I blind? I know I submitted a cat, uh, imported. Oh, here we go. Yee, how cute. Okay, this is our first photo. This is by Chris Boca. Boca. Again, I'm going to be mispronouncing everyone's names today. My Aussie accent and the way we say words, I feel like we end up mispronouncing everything, but I'm trying my best. This is a really cute picture. Um, I'll bring up the, there we go, like the camera setting information as well. I feel like for this photo, I want to really bring out like the green vibrancy of this shot. Because I feel like we've got it there in the cat's eyes and then also in the background just outside the window as well. I'm going to start with a little S curve. Cute kitty. <laughs> I love how you give the feel in your editing. Thank you. I love editing photos so much. Okay, luminance. I'm going to go up on the greens and the yellows. So I feel like that will really brighten up the cat's eyes. And then I'm also going to saturate the greens and the yellows too. Okay, 
Oh, we can saturate the pinks maybe for his nose. Or is it reds? Red. I live in Sydney, Australia. What is the cat looking at? I'm not really sure what that is. I can't tell. Ooh, I feel like a nice little kind of green highlight looks good here. And then maybe a orange warm shadow would be nice too. I feel like a warm shadow would really suit the cat's fur, kind of make it like stand out a little bit more. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Here's a before and after. This is the before and here's the after. Ah, that's a cute kitty. <laughs> I feel like I wonder if we could also do the um the iris enhance. I like to do that with the um with the adjustment brush in Lightroom and then you just press iris enhance and it kind of has like some pre-made settings like saturation and clarity and it makes like the eyes stand out. Might bring the temperature down a little bit and the tint as well because we want them to be more green than anything. Okay, I'm happy with that now. That's super cute. <laughs> Is the live going to be up on YouTube after it's over? Yes. So if you need to go, please don't go, but you can. It'll still be up. <laughs> Mine aired out. I'm not sure. There's a lot on the screen that I haven't scrolled past yet. And also some people who submitted more than one or two photos, I selected maybe like one or two photos um, just to keep it a little bit more fair. But some people sent some photos that were so gorgeous, like I couldn't choose between them. So some people have like two or three in here. Number 49. Actually, that's a good way. If you guys want to call out the number, it's like <laughs> editing bingo. This one here. Oh, I love this photo. Uh, this one is by another solace on Instagram. This is a gorgeous picture. I really like the composition of this one too. I feel like we need a little bit of sharpening on this one. Hey Kung! <laughs> uh, the submissions for this live stream are over for the time being, but as soon as this one's over in a couple of days, I'll post on my Instagram story and on my Twitter. Um, about how you can submit for the next live stream instead. And also any photos that we don't get through today, I'll keep them in this catalog, obviously, and we can go through them uh, next time. I was thinking like Friday, we can do another live stream or maybe next week. Do you guys get into like habits of editing your photos? I feel like I always start with like the same S curve and then I branch out from there. But it's like the S curve is like my base when I'm editing stuff. I feel like this one I need to pump the shadows a little bit more. This location is so lush. Oops. Pretty. I feel like I need to bring the highlights down a little bit as the model is looking super bright and maybe the white point down as well. This photo is gorgeous, honestly. Yep, I agree. I feel like my questions are ignored in every live stream. Oh, I didn't see your question though. If you ask again, I can answer. <laughs> The left arm looks kind of confusing. Yeah, I feel like it's like just straight behind her like that. But I think it looks pretty cool overall. I really love this arm here. I think this one I'm going to go into the blue channel because I want to make this look really lush. So I feel like by pulling out some blues, it's a little uh, makes it look flattering.
I'm going to bring up the vibrance and then I'm going to bring down the saturation. I feel like the vibrance usually affects the cooler colors, whereas saturation affects mostly the warmer colors. So if I like bring up the saturation, it makes her skin super orange. I like that. And then luminance, I'm going to bring up the yellows and the greens to make that background stand out. And then the saturation too, because I want it to be lush. I feel like we might need like a um, graduated field out. I always forget what these tools are called. I just like click them without thinking about it. I feel like we need one going up ways here and I want to bring up um, the temperature, I think. How can I submit my photos for next time? Yeah, I know. We, um, we opened the submissions two days ago, so it was only open for a short time. But if you keep an eye out on my Instagram stories and on my Twitter, my handle is just Julia Trotty on both of them. I'll be posting about how you can submit again in like a couple of days for the next live stream. That's cool. Love your presets. LA and Alice in Wonderland are my favorite. Thank you, Jay. I feel like LA is a good one if you want like a really kind of punchy edit. Uh, are these in raw? Yeah, the majority of these are raw format. I know there are a few JPEGs in here. Because I had some people messaging me on Instagram saying that they don't shoot in RAW at all. And if they could still submit their JPEGs, I was like, yes. I feel like we need some split turning in our life here. Yeah, I think just in the shadows. Cool. I like that. It's got like a really lush feel to it. We've made the green super vibrant and it's got a bit of like a goldy like cast to it as well. So here's the before and here is the after. By the way, I've renamed all the files to everyone's Instagram username aside from like the extra number at the end. So this photo is by another solace on Instagram if you guys want to check um, all these people out. Mine is number 21. Mm -mm -mm. 21. Oh, you submitted this like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I was like, I need to do one final download of like the images that were sent. This one's really cool. I love like the colors and the lighting. I didn't do a lot of low light photography, so it's always fun for me to be able to get to edit something that's in a totally different style to what I'm used to. Uh, this photo is by TGH Photo on Instagram. Do you pay money for models for photo shoot or they will pay to you? Uh, it depends what kind of photo shoot um, I'm doing. Sometimes models get in contact with me wanting to like update their book and stuff like that, in which case they'll pay me. And sometimes I need a model for something in particular, so I would pay them. Just kind of depends like what the shoot is for. I feel like, I mean, I really like how this looks super punchy, but I might go for a really matte black look for this one. We'll see what it looks like. Do you always work in raw and why? Yes, I do. When I first started photography like 11 years ago, I used to shoot on a Pentax camera and I could only put in a two gigabyte memory card. Uh, so because of that, and also the camera was really slow, I used to shoot in JPEG, but then after a few years, I upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark II. That was like my first professional body. 
And from there on, I used to shoot in RAW. I feel like when I started shooting in RAW, like I never looked back after that just because there's so much more information in a RAW file compared to a JPEG. So for example, if you accidentally overexpose a photo, you could save that from a RAW, like depending how much. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of detail to work with. Please take a look at 104. Okay, I'll do that after this one. What have we done here? Contrast. All right, I feel like I want to see what we can do in HSL with like this bright pink color. It's always tricky with like neon lighting. Maybe luminance, because I like the color cast on the model's face. Just feel like I want to adjust how bright and dark it is. Yeah, I feel like by bringing up the luminance of purple and magenta, it kind of brought a bit more light into her face, which I like. Maybe blue as well. Oh, I like bringing up the saturation of yellow. It makes her jacket like stand out so much. Do you prefer dark moody style or punchy saturated style for Lightroom edits? Um, again, I think it depends on the type of picture that I'm working on. For me, I think I go for uh, dark and moody most of the time, but every once in a while I have a shoot that suits to have like a more saturated and punchy look. I think it's also important to like do a little bit of everything. Sometimes you get to practice different styles and things like that. Oh, I like the yellow highlights kind of ties in with her jacket there. I think that looks nice. And then shadows, I'm going to keep them as is because I like the, um, like the purple blue neon shadows from the original photo. I think the only other thing I might do is a graduated filter and just darken this bottom half of the image. And then I'm going to use an adjustment brush and just kind of make it nice and big like the size of her face and just click once and then bring up the exposure slightly. Okay. Here is the final photo, before and after. I love this photo. You did an amazing job with this one. Uh, okay, 104. One, oh, I scrolled too far. Cool. This photo is by Emilia Bedkovska. Bet, uh, Photographia. <laughs> so that with like such an Aussie accent, photographia. <laughs> um, yeah, again, I'm really sorry if I pronounce uh, people's names wrong. Okay, this is a cool photo. I feel like I like the warmth. I feel like it's got a really nice ambient feel to it with that warm lighting. I'm going to try and balance out the lighting a little bit because it's quite strong here and the lighting kind of falls off to the right side of the image. I'm also actually going to crop it in too so you don't see the top half of the um, the paper roll. I think just there. And I might put him in the center as well. Um... How did you get the very first, my very first paid client? Um, my very first paid client, like my first proper shoot, I shot my photography teacher, my high school photography teacher's wedding. <laughs> um, I was so flattered when she asked me to photograph her wedding. Like I couldn't believe it. I think it was one year after I finished school. But I was like so, so excited because I knew wedding photography was something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, so yeah, I felt very privileged to have that opportunity to shoot her wedding. And it went really well too. Um, <laughs> so funny. I was like so excited. 
and it was raining like pouring torrential downpour on the day of her wedding and like yeah I was like that was my first kind of introduction to wedding photography where you don't have control over like anything that happens (laughs) but I feel like everyone made the most of the day and we were all still really happy with the photos that we got so yeah it was a fun experience I feel like I need to sharpen this image a little bit Okay, what do I want to do with this? I feel like I kind of want to give it a almost a cooler edit, but still keeping that kind of ambient light from here. So I might add some blues to the shadows. Kind of balance that out a little bit here in the S curve. And then I'm going to pull out some greens from the shadows too, give it a little bit more warmth. I might I might pull down the saturation too, like a vintage cool edit. Okay, and then in luminance, I'm gonna bring up the oranges just to kind of brighten up the subject's skin tone, make him stand out a little bit more from the photo. And then I think in split toning, I'm gonna add a nice yellow to the highlights, which will affect his face and like that ambient kind of lighting. And then I'm going to go for like a blue or a purple, I think, in the shadows. I think like this kind of purpley blue. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to add a graduated filter to this side of the photo just because, again, I feel like it's really dark on this side. So maybe if we brighten it up, it'll feel a little bit more balanced. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Maybe I overdid it on the saturation. Okay, (laughs) here is the final before and after. Before and after. (laughs) I feel like sometimes I just get into like editing zone. Okay, what are you guys saying over here? Um, My photo is number 13. By the way, I hope you guys like how I'm editing your photos. Should I put my mic closer? Okay, 13, 13. This one. Okay. This photo is taken by Kevin Barthel on Instagram. That highlight looks amazing. Please come to Nepal. I would love to go there. We can't go anywhere at the moment, though. <sighs> Are weddings the more stressful kinds of shoots you do? Um, I feel like weddings were stressful when I first started. And while they are like a really high pressure environment, like even to this day, I feel like the more weddings you shoot, the... I don't know it's like the more calm you feel capturing them and you kind of know what to do and you know what to do if things go wrong and like it's not really something you have to stress too much about anymore I feel like for me (laughs) which I don't do them anymore the most stressful kinds of shoots were e-commerce for fashion brands those were intense sometimes um oh there's no metadata wanted to get rid of a little bit I feel like there's a little bit of vignetting might just get rid of that to start with and then I might add some sharpening as well all the pics are cool I know I was so impressed downloading all these photos there's some really really beautiful ones Okay, I'm going to warm this up and I feel like we need a little bit more pinks. I also feel like the light is hitting her shoulder quite brightly. So I'm going to try starting off with an adjustment brush just here 
and seeing if we can balance that out just so it's not distracting like while we're editing the rest of the photo okay so I'm gonna start with an s curve as always bit predictable <laughs> I always watch your behind the scene videos so I can keep a lookout on what kind of lens works the best for portraits. Thank you. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch my videos and who's here in the live stream today. I appreciate it a lot. Man, I feel like even just that, like a little S curve and bringing up the temperature made a really nice difference to this photo. My eyes are going to the shoulders. How do you make the face stand out? Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna add another adjustment layer to her face. I kind of brought down the exposure on her shoulders a bit. So I think if I make a new one, I might do one kind of here across the eyes and bring up the exposure a bit. there and then I might also uh, do the iris enhance here as well it kind of just like makes the eyes pop a little bit I like that going to go for a cooler highlights color and a nice warm shadows. Good night everyone from 3.30 a.m. in Vancouver. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Wow, that's pretty late. Are you guys staying creative during this um, self-isolation time? I'd love to know like what you guys have been up to. And I feel like we need a little bit more pink in the tint. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I feel like sometimes you can go like crazy editing a photo and sometimes just something really simple works really well. So here is the before and here is the after. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's a really nice photo too. All right, give me a number, number 98. <laughs> I feel like I literally feel like I'm calling out bingo numbers. Um, ninety-eight. Oh, I really like this one when I downloaded it. Uh, this photo is by V R S P T I on Instagram. I wouldn't know how to say that out loud. Um. And this was taken at 30 millimeters. Cool. Okay, I'm going to straighten this up first of all. I feel like when there's a lot of straight lines in an image, it's important to straighten it, straighten it out. Uh, Dan's a mod in this chat, by the way. How exciting. <laughs> Mine with the castle in the distance. Okay, I'll look for that one next. Okay, let's balance out this photo first. We're going to go bring the highlights down, shadows up because they're quite deep since he's wearing like a black hoodie and he happened to be walking past a darker store. Might bring the contrast up. That's cool. All right, and now let's go for the S curve. Is it too late to submit a picture? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I had opened the submissions two days ago, 
But when this live stream is over in the next couple of days, I'll post about um, how you can submit for next time. All right. Um, and then this one, I feel like I want it to be quite desaturated, I think. So I'm going to bring the saturation down. Um, and then in particular, I'm going to bring yellow saturation down because of that sign in the background. That'll just kind of like dull it down a little bit, which will look nice. And then um, I'm going to start in the green channel. Am I going to regret this? Yeah, I will. I'm going to start in the blue channel. <laughs> Is it a lottery? <laughs> yeah, you have to like get in with your numbers first. Mine is 16. Okay. Uh, okay, blue channel. Why you love doing photography? I don't know. It just makes me happy. <laughs> like as simple as that. I just really love doing it. I feel like there's just so much you can do with it, um, like creative wise, that it's just kind of like never ending possibilities with photography. So I feel like, yeah, even if one day like I'm a portrait photographer, if I get bored with the portraits, I can go out and shoot landscapes if I want. If I get bored of landscapes, I can do like self portraits and like there's just so much you can do. Okay, I'm going to go for a really cyan kind of highlights for this one. And then an orange shadows. I know the picture is looking like a hot mess, but it's going to come together, I promise. And then I think we might also need to sharpen a little bit too. Okay, now back to RGB curve. And I'm going to deepen it up a little bit more. I'm also going to bring back a little bit of our saturation. And then I'm going to bring down our saturation in HSL as well. Um, just because I feel like it was looking a little bit too monochromatic overall. So instead I want to specifically bring down our oranges and the red slider too. Um, I know you edit in Photoshop as well. Do you prefer using camera edit raw in Photoshop or Lightroom? Uh, I like using, when I first started shooting in raw, I used to edit in Adobe Bridge. So that would have been Photoshop camera raw. Um, but then I decided to get used to Lightroom and I actually really love how all the sliders that you need are just one after another here. And all you need to do is scroll to get to them. Whereas in camera raw, you need to like click every single tab to get from calibration to split toning to sharpening. And it's like kind of wastes a little bit of time, which sounds a bit silly. But when you're editing like a wedding, for example, where you've got like 800 photos that you need to edit, it really does um, save a lot of time just having it up like this. Okay, and then I'm going to bring down the blue hue just to give it like a cooler um, like color spectrum look and I think this is the final photo <laughs> every time I'm like this is the final photo and then I like tweak a couple of extra things no this is it okay so this is the before and this is the after I like how that turned out it's got like a cool um golden kind of tone to it okay um so we have to look for the photo with the castle in the background um, do you know what number that is? Is it this? Oh, this one. <laughs> I was like, surely I'll know what a castle is when I see it. <laughs> 
77, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you said it just as I found it. Oh my gosh, this photo is so cool. Uh, oh, another one by Chris Bokal. Okay. Um, so I want to make sure that this is straight. It's like the first thing I do with anything with straight lines. And then I think I want to do like a, again, like a vintage kind of look to this, I think would be cool. The ultimate question, <laughs> A73 or 5D Mark IV? Um, honestly, in terms of like how they work, they're both great cameras. I feel like, like if I had to start all over again, I would probably go for the A7 III just because mirrorless is, for me, it's fun to shoot with and it's also like smaller, um, it makes things easier for you, you know, with like the eye autofocus and the servo focus modes are good and stuff like that. So yeah, if I had to start again, I would say a7 III, but I still like using both cameras. <laughs> Diplomatic answer. Yeah, giving this like a purpley vintage look. Okay, in hue, I want to make the greens look a little bit more like yellow, like it's like an autumn vibe. I'm also going to bring down the saturation of the grass too. I feel like it's really pink. Let me bring down the tint. I think it needs more contrast too. Uh, can you do 101 next? Yes. 101. I notice you always do <laughs> bathroom guy. <laughs> I notice you always do portraits of people. Are you ever going to do portraits of pets? I take portraits of Evie at home all the time. <laughs> Should I make a video about that? She's not the most cooperative model I've ever had, but she is very cute. Okay, I'm going to go with the classic golden highlights here. And I'm going to go with the blue shadows. Just a little bit though. I don't know. I think castle and I think like fairy tale. So I automatically go for like the purpley vintage colors, which I like. So here is the before and here is the after. It's a very beautiful castle. Where is this? By the way, I want to know. Okay, 101. Oh, this is a good one. Was this in the Netherlands? I'm trying to remember from the emails. This is my favorite edit so far. Ah, thank you. Uh, I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, do you never do you ever use blue primary instead of curves? I feel like they work quite differently. So I do use both of them, but I don't really use um, the calibration stuff a lot. Just every once in a while. But I feel like the this kind of shifts the color spectrum a lot more of the photo, whereas the curves uh, doesn't do that as much. Okay, what are we going to do for this one? This one I feel like a like a, a white kind of vibrant um, edit would be nice. Like desaturated but high contrast. <laughs> so I feel like we'll bring the white point up. But I do still want to retain the highlights. 
then we'll give it a small S curve so we still have like quite a lot of contrast in the photo. One twenty or one twenty one. Okay. Okay, and then I feel like here I might bring yeah the yellow saturation and maybe orange too. And then I will bring the luminance of orange up. And then I want to bring the saturation of red up just because the bag I feel like is a really cool focal point of the photo. Um, oh, also, I need to post the live stream to Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, guys, one second. You can ask Dan some questions. <laughs> Share. Capture One or Lightroom? For me, Lightroom, I've never used Capture One, to be honest, but I've heard it's very good for uh, editing Sony RAW files. Okay, I'm gonna bring the blue luminance down as well, just again to like deepen that sky a bit. Uh, is a curve necessary to adjust? Can I get the same results by adjusting HSL or other indicators, namely tone? Um, I feel like the closest thing to the tone curve is the basics channel. So the highlight shadows, whites, blacks, and contrast all together. That's like what the tone curve is. But what I like to do is I like to use the basics channel to like fix any lighting issues in my photo and like balance it out if like the sky's too bright and things like that and then I use the tone curve to add style to the tone so like matting my blacks or matting my whites and stuff like that okay now I feel like I need to bring up the temperature and the tint I feel like we overdid it on the orange saturation. I'm going to bring a little bit of it back. And then I'm not sure if we need any. Oh, maybe the blue split toning on the highlights is quite nice. Oh, and then I'm going to go for purple in the shadows. Pull that down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. It's like a bit of a, a clean edit, but I like it. Here is the before and here is the after. This photo was taken by um, Sigi Weissenberger on Instagram. Again, I cannot pronounce anyone's names. I'm so sorry, but they're written up here. So if you like someone's photos, please go and check them out on Instagram because I'm sure there's more where these came from. Okay, I said uh, either 120 or 121. Yeah, these are cool. This one's sideways. Oh, these are awesome. I feel like I'll do this one because it's like indoors and I usually edit like outdoor photos. <laughs> when and how do you use lens correction? I feel like I use lens correction when I really notice the vignetting with my eyes. Sometimes I like having vignetting because it kind of suits the... um the photo and the look and stuff like that and then sometimes I feel like the vignetting is like distracting so I use lens correction to get rid of it okay so like I mentioned here I'm using uh the basics channel to just kind of fix the lighting a little bit make it look more even I guess like that looks really nice 
And then I'll use the tone curve to add the style to the tone. I did this, but it was out of the shot, I just realized. Oh no, I meant 119 or 120. Okay, well, I'll do this one anyway. Okay. Feel like a little bit of a soft look is nice for this one. Oh my gosh, there's so many numbers. Okay, and then I feel like I want to desaturate the oranges a little bit and bring them up with luminance. And then the same with the reds too. I might bring the red saturation up though. And then for this one, I feel like because there's so like, there's not a lot of colors happening in the photo. What I usually like to do to add a little bit of style is the split toning because you are adding colors rather than working with the colors um, that are in there. Have you forgotten about 16? No, I haven't forgotten. That one's coming next. <laughs> I may have forgotten, but I will do it next. Okay, so I feel like they're adding yellow adds like that, like a nice creamy looking color. And I feel like, ooh, that kind of like pink looks nice. I like that. And I might bring the balance so more of the highlight color affects the image rather than the pinks. So I think that, okay, we're doing 16 and then 119. Oh, I love this photo. <laughs> Sometimes I get really excited when I download them and I'm like, I can't wait to edit this one. I feel like the lighting here is so beautiful. Okay, this one I think would look really cool as brown tones because it would be like a lot easier to make the grass, or not the grass, like the trees more brown than it would be to make the wheat look like a color and I feel like we need like a whole color scheme going on we'll see okay I'm gonna bring the highlights down it is a very pretty photo I think again I'm gonna sharpen this one Okay, I'm going to start by bringing up the temperature and then also bringing down the vibrance. And I think I want to keep this one to be quite contrasty, so I'm not going to go too crazy on the tone curve. Hi from Belgium. This photo editing ASMR. <laughs> I was thinking it would be really funny actually to do a proper ASMR Lightroom tutorial video. Just because you guys, well, I notice a lot of people always saying like my voice would really suit ASMR. So I don't know, maybe I should. Definitely want golden tones for this. Please do ASMR. <laughs> I've been thinking about it, so <laughs> might just pop up randomly <laughs> one day on my channel. Okay. 
Okay. I like where that's going. Uh, so now I'm going to jump into, oh, we haven't used HSL hue a lot in any of these edits. So I want to try and change the color of the trees in the background. So I'm going to bring the yellows into the oranges and the greens into the yellows. Add like that autumn look to the photos. I feel like that's nice. And then I might desaturate the greens and the blues a little bit as well. It reminds me of the world before quarantine. I agree. Like, so sunny and carefree. I do like to saturate sometimes with the calibration sliders. Okay. I don't know if I should do anything else to the sky. Maybe, maybe I should. I filmed a video today that I'm so excited to upload. Uh, I think on Thursday night I'm going to upload it. But it's something very different because we're in quarantine right now. So it's not like a photo shoot that you guys are used to seeing from me. <laughs> So I'm really excited to upload it and see what you guys think. Okay, yeah, I brought down the exposure of the sky a tiny bit. And then I feel like just one more thing I want to add. Um, uh, brighten up the model's face a little bit, but I'm going to do like a really big brush and then just bring up the exposure slightly. All right. <laughs> just tweaking my last things before I say it's done. Um, here is the before original photo by Malov, Malov Anna. Um, Instagram name in the top left hand corner. I'm sorry, Anna. <laughs> and here is the after. I like that. That's so pretty. Okay. Uh, we were saying 119. Um, and also 19. Okay. Just because it's there, and then I promise 119 or, yeah, 119 is the number I remember. So we'll do that one after this one. This is a cool photo. I feel like my brain is going to be fried after this. It's so, uh, like, interesting editing <laughs> in so many different styles, like, one after another. I feel like I want like a low contrast kind of look. This one's definitely going to have matte black with the tone curve. The model is beautiful. I agree. It's a really nice shot. It's really like, you know, even though there's no eye contact here, I feel like it's a really intense portrait. I really like it. Do you only use Lightroom or Photoshop as well? I use Photoshop too. Usually my process is um, I will cull my photos using Photo Mechanic and then I will open them up into, whoa, I just clicked something, <laughs> into Lightroom where I'll apply like all these adjustments that you're seeing me do today. And then once I'm finished with the Lightroom adjustments, then I'll open up my photo in Photoshop and do my retouching where I usually use frequency separation to retouch my photos. Uh, and then that's it. <laughs> that's my whole process.
Okay, so I'm trying to desaturate some of the colors in the photo because I feel like um, because it's such a close-up photo, I want her skin to be like the most pr prominent part of the shot. And then I kind of want to tone down the color of her shirt and the grass in the background and make them kind of blend into each other a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm going to make the grass a little bit more brown in the shirt. A little bit of a deeper blue and then I might make it a, a bit brighter as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the blue channel and add a nice little S curve. Cause I want this to be quite warm because of the location and the sunlight. I feel like it would suit this. Hello from California. It's 4 a.m. right now. <laughs> Quarantine sucks. Uh, yeah. I hope you guys have been like trying to stay creative and stuff though throughout all of this. I feel <laughs> I we were saying this in the live stream last time, but I feel like when you can't do something, so when you can't go out and do a photo shoot outdoors is when you get like the most ideas and the most enthusiasm for a photo shoot. So it's like channel that energy now and write down all your ideas that you're having at the moment somewhere. So then when this is all over, you guys have no excuses but to go out and shoot. Me included, because I do the same thing. I really like where this is going. I feel like it still needs something. Yeah, I feel like more warmth. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Maybe a little bit more pinks. All right, ready? Here is the before and here is the after. This photo is by Erica my nd on instagram it's midnight here in new zealand i always forget new zealand's like three hours ahead oh two hours it's 10 p.m in sydney um i had to cancel two photo shoots i couldn't wait to do it's sad <laughs> yeah i know I have um, some lenses that Tamron let me borrow and I was really, really keen to do some photo shoots with them, but uh, yeah, couldn't do that anymore. Okay, lucky number 119. Is it this one? Are you still here? <laughs> Are you tired of waiting for me to get to your, to your photo? Okay, 119. Uh, this photo is by Silent Media. Yay, I hope you liked it, Erica. Okay, let's do it. This is a nice photo. They're all really nice photos. <laughs> I'm going to go quite deep on the blacks on this one. So I feel like this photo, I don't know, I think it's just my personal style, but I prefer photos to be like slightly um, underexposed rather than over. So I usually like to do that with my editing. So I gave it like a bit of a darker vibe, <laughs> vibe style. And then I might bring the white point down as well. Hey, that's nice. Uh, do you know Mitch Lally? You should do a collaboration with him. Funny you say that. <laughs> so I got to meet Mitch. Uh, I'm going to say this was like a month ago now 
at one of the Google events uh, with Team Pixel. And he is super nice. And we were like talking all night and like talking about how we want to collaborate and all that stuff on a YouTube video. And then he was coming to Sydney literally like now at the end of March, but we couldn't do anything because we're not allowed to leave the house or plan photo shoots or anything. So it was going to happen, but now we have to wait, unfortunately. <laughs> Going to shop and... Do you use tribe archip mm, <laughs> I can't say that word presets. Um I actually I don't use any other presets aside from my own. <clears throat> Just digital film actions. <laughs> Low key plug. <clears throat> I need water. It's 4.30 p.m. in India. Thanks for live streaming. I was simply sitting at home. Yay. I'm glad I can provide some entertainment. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's really nice with like the super blues in the shadows. And then I feel like a little bit of warmth here. And then I think I might do the same thing with the greens. I'm going to pull them out of the highlights so we can get a bit of like a pink tone in the highlights. Okay, then I'm going to try camera calibration. <laughs> I have my light set up just above there which is like right behind my screen so if you see me kind of like squinting at my screen it's only because that light is super bright water love your photos best wishes from italy thank you <clears throat> so cool that this is bringing in people worldwide i know right i love it we oh we used to start my streams by asking or telling everyone to put where they're from um, in the chat. That used to be fun. Mine is 25, the boy in the blur if you want to edit it. Yeah, I've seen you comment that a few times. So I'm going to do 25 next. Oh, I really love like this blue pink feel to this photo. May I bring up the blue hue a tiny bit just so it's a little bit warmer and the saturation as well but yeah I think I love that that's really cool so I'm gonna say that's done this is the final before and after photo by silent media uh, on Instagram this is the before and this is the after yay that's a gorgeous photo I love it Um, okay, 25. Okay, I understand what you mean by boy in the blur now. Okay, I'm going to start with some lens correction, which disappeared. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay, so someone was asking before when I decide to use lens correction. In this inst instance, because the background is so like a solid color, you can really see the vignetting. So I'm going to use it here to try and get rid of that. And then I feel like sometimes the auto um, profile correction gets rid of too much vignetting and it makes it white as opposed to like making it disappear. Um, so I do normally bring down the vignetting a little bit after I apply it. 4 a.m. in California. <laughs> I would go crazy if, <laughs> if I couldn't stay up till 4 a.m. I'm like, definitely not a night owl. 
The editing of this one was great. Thank you. And yeah, I'm glad you like it. Silent sessions. <laughs> Ten or five already in Sydney. Please don't end the live stream. I hope you had your dinner. I did have my dinner. Okay, let's edit. Oh no, I'm gonna get rid of the temperature and tint. I like the um the colors of that straight out of the camera. Actually, can you do eleven next? Yes. Oh, could you do 125 next? I have an online class soon. Okay, 125, 11. <laughs> Let's do a bit of an S-curve on this one. I'm going to try and keep as much of the, like that fog in the top as possible. So I think I'm going to bring up the shadows and bring down the blacks for some contrast rather than bumping up the overall contrast. Okay, and then I'm going to do some stuff. <laughs> I'm going to do some stuff in the blue curve. <laughs> I'm already forgetting how to speak. I do really want to accentuate the blue as much as possible, but I do also want to try and bring out some of his skin tones here, just so he's not like super blending into the background. So I feel like if I pull down here, it might help a little bit. Added a little bit of green. Trying to pull down the green uh, tone curve by like a pixel. Okay, let's bump up the orange saturation. There is no orange in this shot. Reds maybe. <laughs> Can you tell when I need to like concentrate a little bit more? Um, New Jersey and North Carolina, it's 7 a.m. Nice. Ooh, okay. I'm going to add... That nice warm skin tone here in the split toning shadows. And then in the highlights, I'm going to accentuate the blue fog, the blue fog, the blue fog <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah, no, that's too much in the shadows. Oh, yeah, I like that. And then I might sharpen it up a little bit as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I like it because it still kind of retains the original look of the photo, but it adds a little bit of life to like his skin tone. Might also add another um, graduated filter and just bring down the exposure of that sky. It was a little bit too white for my liking. So I think that. Okay, so here is the before by Eliza Timuti photo, and here is the after. Okay, number 125, because that person needs to get to a class, online class. Mm. Ooh, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, this photo is by Estelle. You sent me these photos on Instagram the other day and I'm like, I'm so excited to edit it. Okay, I'm going to start off with a little S-curve. I love this location. It's so pretty. Uh, I love 
love your editing so far. I'm so glad you're doing this live. Discovering great photographies, photographers and learning from your advice is so helpful. Yay. I'm really glad you like it. This is really fun. I feel like we should do this a lot more often. Okay. I don't know if I want to go like a... Yeah, I want to go for a really moody edit. So I'm going to go for blues in the highlights. <laughs> I feel like this photo matches the last one we were editing, actually. And then I'm going to go for, I think, a slightly warmer kind of look for the shadows. But I'm going to bring the saturation quite low. So it's only just very subtly there. And then I want to change the hue of the greens to be a little more yellow, I think. Might have to do that with a graduated filter. Just desaturate them slightly. <laughs> That's a huge yard. Yeah, that's pretty cool to have this as your backyard. It's so beautiful. I feel like I'd be out there every day <laughs> taking pictures, especially if it's so foggy like this. Are you from the US? Okay, and then I think I'm going to add a little bit of a adjustment brush to you <laughs> and bring up the temperature slightly because I feel like it was looking a little bit cold there. Okay, so now I feel like maybe it is too much blue. Maybe we're going to go for a blue shadow um, and then do a warmer highlights just so we have like the blue down the bottom and then it kind of fades out into a bit of a warmer color. Now, oh, that's a nice little kind of gradient. I think like a deeper blue there looks really nice. Okay, and I probably desaturated that a little bit too much in the first place. Ah, my computer's lagging. I wonder if we could do a little bit of noise reduction. I really don't mind the noise though. I kind of feel like it suits the um the picture. That's nice. Okay. All right. I think I'm happy with what that looks like. And then the last thing, because I did mention it on Instagram, is that this kind of clump of grass is a little bit distracting. I would get rid of it with Photoshop, so I don't know if it's going to work in Lightroom, but we'll see. <laughs> Do you guys ever retouch in Lightroom? I saw it just... It just doesn't know anything. <laughs> okay, it's not perfect, but if I did that in Photoshop, it would look a little bit a little better. But I feel like it's a bit cleaner without that darker spot of grass there. Uh, so here is the final before and after. This photo was by is by Estelle. Here's the before, and here is the after. Thank you for sending it. This picture almost looks magical. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I saw my photo number 15, the church chapel one. Could you do that one pretty please? Yes. 15. Ooh, yeah. I remember your email. You said that you took this um, on your trip to Europe. This photo is by Fedora on Fedora on Instagram. So 
So I'm going to start by straightening it out. <laughs> I mean, I feel like your edits were really good in it as well, Estelle. I feel like you did... Um, I ended up doing something really similar to what you had with like the warm at the top and then the cooler colors down the bottom. But yeah, I love it. Don't stop shooting in your backyard because it's an amazing location. I keep commenting on my number. Mm. Can you comment it one more time, please? I'll keep an eye out. Okay, so this one again, I'm also going to use lens correction because you can see quite a lot of vignetting around the edges. Especially also because it was taken on a wide angle lens, 15 millimeters. Okay, and I'm going to brighten it up and kind of balance out the colors. The last picture would have looked scarier if the balloons were red. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, 133, three, I'll do that one next. Hey, okay, this one I feel like we're gonna do a lot in HSL. To bring it all together. Okay, got some contrast in there. I like the blue highlights in this. Okay. Um, okay. So HSL, I feel like it's still not straight. I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> Maybe I'm going crazy. Um, okay. Saturation. Okay, I want to start by bringing the saturation of yellows down because the chairs are a little bit distracting. And then the same with, well, I thought bringing orange down, maybe just a little bit, I'll bring orange down. And then I also want to bring the saturation for blues down as well and aqua because I feel like that will affect like a lot of the floor. And then in luminance, I want to bring the blue slider up to brighten the floor a little more. And I feel like I'll bring the luminance of yellow up. It's like the chairs are less distracting if they're brighter, which is interesting. And I'll bring the orange luminance slider up as well. Because I feel like the oranges are in all the lights on the poles of the church. So bring, bringing them up, it's like the lights are brighter. And then I feel really want to bring this up so it's brighter as well. Yeah, that looks nice. What was that? Orange. And the saturation there. I might have a look at um, the transform tool and see if we can do anything. I feel like maybe it's slightly skewed a little bit and that's why I keep thinking it's not straight. Oh, I feel like that helped a lot. Okay. <laughs> I like the way that looks. I feel like photos like this, like especially photos you take on holidays and stuff like documenting the things that you saw um, are really cool having a natural edit to them so I'm happy with what that looks like here is the before and here is the after oh I just realized I completely hid that with my luminance 
Okay, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring blue luminance back down so you can see the cross in the background. Okay, before and after. Okay, that's better. <laughs> uh, one thirty three. Oh, this photo is so nice. All right, time for online class and I'll watch the rediffusion. Re Thanks for doing this. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Estelle, you too. Okay, I'm gonna start by bringing down the exposure for this one. Oh my gosh, this location and this photo and like this everything is so beautiful. <laughs> And this one, I want to give like a little bit of a matte black look, but I still want it to be quite um, natural. So I might give like maybe like a wider kind of two points there. Okay, and then I feel like we need more pink in the tint and warmer, a warmer temperature. Thank you so much for the edit. Love you so much from Singapore. Yay! I'm really glad you liked it. Hi from Scotland. Oh, I miss Scotland so much. That was such a beautiful place. <laughs> Julia, is Corona affecting your bookings? Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot. It's kind of scary. Um, because Dan and I do wedding photography and Dan does wedding videography, but like we do it together full time. Um, and all of our weddings for the next three months have been rescheduled to the future. So yeah, it's a bit scary, like not really having, well, I'm very, very lucky to have YouTube and you guys. And I'm so appreciative that I've still got the internet to work with. Um, but it is also scary, like not having anything else because I feel like the internet like you don't even really know what's going to happen but I guess I thought weddings were secure and look what happened to them <laughs> so yeah scary times but yeah and things have been really quiet I feel like also in Australia we had those crazy bushfires around the end of um last year and New Year's and stuff which had already started affecting things and then yeah so it's been a lot. <laughs> okay, I want to add a lot of warmth with the tone curve. So I'm going to bring up the blues and then bring down in the blacks quite a lot. And then um, have you guys experienced like a change in bookings and how your businesses um have you been to Singapore I've only ever been to the Singapore airport <laughs> on a layover on the way to Thailand I think or on the way to Europe Dan do you remember I think it was on the way to Europe Okay, I really like that rosy kind of color. That's super pretty. All right, guys, I think I'm going to edit a couple more photos and then call this a day. But what I'm going to do is I'll get rid of all the photos that we already edited today. So then next time we do a live stream, they'll be 
all these photos will still be here so you don't have to resubmit them but I'm getting like tired <laughs> I feel like editing in different styles like takes a lot out of you. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being a baby. Where do you get your music from your videos? I get it all from Artlist. It's been so good on Artlist. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I like the pink shadows. I feel like I don't do pink shadows very often, but today they're popping up a little bit more and more. <laughs> so that's nice there. All these edits have been so beautiful. I love your work. Thank you. That makes me really happy. I feel like we still need something. Maybe I need to bring up the saturation in some of the calibration channels. Oh, hey. Evie. Evie, come. Hi. Hi. Come. <laughs> She's scratching the carpet. Come here. Ugh. Come and say hello. Hi. Don't <laughs> show your butt. <laughs> Sit. Good girl. This is Evie, everyone. Uh, will you someday do any night bucket kind of photography? Yeah, I would love to. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, the Google Pixel giveaway video that I did last week, so um, the one with like the phone in the thumbnail, we did some night sight photos on that with some bucket and stuff. We could, oh, <laughs> we could use that location again for some other types of photography. Okay, enough. Now she's biting my fingers <laughs> yeah she's an angel but she also does a lot of naughty things <laughs> okay I love this photo I think I'm done with it so here is the before and here is the after and this photo is by vida.eme on instagram Um, okay, I'm going to do, I think maybe like two more. So I'll get uh, number 96. Oh, this is a really cool one. When I first saw this photo in like a thumbnail, I thought this was like a weird kind of flower petal. <laughs> now I realize it's a fountain. Hi, Evie, can you ask your owner to edit number 28 for your cat friend, please? Okay, I think you're going to be photo number two then. Yeah, this is a cool photo. Okay, how much do we have to recover with the highlights? Okay, I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit. Oh, I love the clouds in the background. <laughs> Evie's just like rolling around on her back on the carpet. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up the shadows. Evie. Dan, do you want to <laughs> come and get her? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bring up the shadows since we brought down the exposure to try and save the clouds a little bit more. And then I'm also going to bring down the blacks and bring up the contrast. So, Evie, stop. 
<laughs> even she's like okay get off the computer it's time for paying attention to me so that we were able to bring back a lot of detail in the sky <laughs> she's so naughty okay i'm gonna bring up the tint because i feel like it's a little bit green and then i want to make the dress like super yellow so I'm going to make it less orange and then saturate the yellows. Come on, we're going for a look. Uh, thank you so much for editing my pick. It makes me so happy. I was curious and it's so great to see your perspective on it. I've just learned something so cool from you today. Um, yeah, I feel like it's really interesting to see how someone else would edit your photo. Um, that's actually something like a little bit of a spoiler, but next week I really want to do a competition where you guys can win some gift cards to my preset shop where you edit some of my photos. I think that'd be really fun. And then I'll make a video about like all the submissions and stuff so we can have a look at all the different edits. But I feel like, um... There's always something to learn by seeing someone else edit your photos. So yeah, I'm really excited to do that. And it's also, again, in the other way around, it's also um, cool to be able to work on someone else's raw files too. I feel like we have a little bit of a green color cast on the model's face, probably from like the green uh, location that she's in. So I'm going to be editing like the overall colors first and then I might use uh, an adjustment brush to kind of bring the tints up a little bit more into the pinks. looking a little bit HDR. I think I overdid that with the blue luminance. Um, I didn't send my photos because I have shots from mobile, not from DSLR. That's okay. You can still send them. I downloaded pretty much everything unless there was like a permission error or something that didn't let me download it. So yeah, if you only shoot in JPEG, you can still send that. And if you don't have a camera and only a mobile phone, you can still send me your photos. Okay, I'm gonna go for a bit of a green highlight. And then the shadows, I wanna go for like a warm tone. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is add a little adjustment brush here to the face and I'm going to bring the tints up a little bit and add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, I think that's good. So here is the before. Uh, this is photos by Ra on Instagram and here is the after. This is a gorgeous photo. I love it. Okay, and then the last one that we're doing today is, what number was it? 20, the one with the cat, oh, this one, 28. This one is by Timon, Timon Hajime. Sorry about my horrible pronunciation. <laughs> uh, this will be the last photo today, but all the photos that we have edited today, I'll get rid of them out of the Lightroom catalog so then we can start fresh and I can edit new photos um, next time. Okay, you guys have to check out this Instagram account. I follow them and they post the most gorgeous photos of their cats. Um, and they're also Sydney based. 
So yeah, go follow them. Ooh, okay. So I love the purple color of the trees here. And then I also really like the golden hour tones in this photo as well. So I'm going to be focusing on that while we edit. Pretty kitty. <laughs> Good night. It was so fun watching you edit till next time. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, we have quite a contrasty edit. Uh, does focal length affect the sharpness of a photo? Um, I wouldn't say it affects the sharpness per se. I think the type of lens that you're using, uh, what kind of aperture you're using, that will definitely affect the sharpness. The focal length more so affects the like compression of a photo, like what the foreground to background looks like, and also like um, like the overall look distortion of the image. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel where we did a portrait photo shoot on a 24, 35, 50, 85, and a 135 millimeter lens, and I showed you guys like the comparison side by side to see like the difference. Um, yeah, so I feel like it wouldn't necessarily affect the sharpness. I feel like the aperture affects the sharpness a lot more, if that makes sense. Okay, so here I really want to saturate the jacaranda trees. I also want to make them a little bit brighter. What do you normally set your white balance to? I normally have mine on 5200. <laughs> it's just like my go-to number. If you're shooting in RAW, it doesn't matter that much because you have all that information in the RAW file, so you can always change it afterwards. But I feel like 5200 always looks really good for outdoor natural light, at least in Sydney, just so it looks nice on the back of the camera when I'm showing like the team or my client or whatever, what the photo looks like. Okay, so here I want to accentuate that sunset color. Thanks for editing our photo. Yeah, you're welcome. I was really excited when you sent it through. So I was like, I have to <laughs> edit this one. Okay, and then for the shadows. Oh, I like red in the shadows because I feel like it accentuates the jacaranda. But I also want to see what... Oh, purple. Purple's nice. Yes, I like that. And then I'm going to bring the blue primary down just to add, make the oranges of the sunset look a little bit pinker. And then I wonder if we could, maybe with an adjustment brush, um, maybe if we paint here up on the sides like where the cars are uh, and bring the exposure down a little bit and then the clarity and sharpness no that looks too fake I think just the clarity and the exposure down a little bit on the sides looks really nice and makes the subject and the kitty stand out a little bit more oh and there's a little bit of fur on her shirt maybe I can take that out Yay! Okay, I love that. So here is the before and here is the after. I really like those colors. 
this is a really pretty photo too. It helps that you guys have really amazing photos because it makes editing a lot easier when you've got like a good base to work with. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for everyone who took the time to submit their photos. We have a lot more to get through, so I will schedule the next live stream. I'm thinking maybe Friday. Um, and I think around this same time as well, because I know there were still a lot of photos that we didn't get to. Um, we didn't have the chance to get to. Um, I'd like to submit a photo for next time, but it's a JPEG. Is that a problem? No, if you only shoot in JPEG, that's fine. Um, just, just send it through. <laughs> that's a cool idea to make the subject pop. I was struggling with the cars while I was editing it. Thanks. Yay. You're welcome. Yeah, I feel like when there's something that stands out too much or is like really distracting, especially if it's in like the edges of the photo, I do like to bring the exposure down because it's kind of like a fake vignetting almost. And then I feel like bringing the clarity down as well kind of reduces the contrast and makes it blend <laughs> into the background a little more. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining in and chatting and hanging out with me and making my night really enjoyable and fun. Um, I had so much fun editing your photos. Uh, so keep an eye out on my Instagram stories and on my Twitter. I'm Julia Trotty on both of them, and I will be posting about how to submit your next photos in a couple of days. I think I'll probably do one day notice of submissions because we still have a lot from this session to get through as well so yeah definitely keep an eye out on my stories but yeah thank you again so much and i'll see you guys all really soon okay bye